<laughs> it's not doing very good. I mean, it's too, it's too hot. That's not a survivable situation. And those snakes are probably just dying. I was just sent a call in kind of central Phoenix, probably a rattlesnake based on where it's at. And that's actually one of the ones that's in our study area uh, from the looks of it, just briefly looking at a map, uh, which means this animal is going to get a pit tag and uh, it's going to go for a nice hot hike. I just left my house up here in Cape Creek. It's 114 degrees. So Central Phoenix, it might be pushing 120. It is kind of funny to me when people talk about the heat in Arizona and say things like, oh, it's a dry heat. It's it's uh, heat plus humidity that really gets you. And yeah, heat and humidity together can be really uncomfortable. I've spent a lot of time in tropical places in extreme heat with 100% humidity. Uh, yeah, it's, it's sweaty and it's balmy, but you don't just die like you do here. We're not talking about comfort. We're not talking about whether or not you're gonna sweat while you're eating your, your uh, eating dinner out on the on the patio somewhere. Um, you, we're worried about dying. <laughs> it's a different thing. If I roll down this window when I'm driving, it's like someone stuck a, a hair dryer in here. And people, hikers are airlifted off mountains and, and stuff every day right now. People, people die. So it's a serious thing. It's not just a comfort thing. Hey there. She said to just like go around right through there. Does that work? Yeah. She sent me a See, video here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but if you just want to go around there. Okay, no problem. Oh, I think it's a speckled. Yep, it's a speckled little guy. Oh, don't go in there. I got it. It was a little little speckled rattlesnake. Gotcha. So yeah. it was funny. I was just like walking around all of a sudden I started hearing like just like I was rattling at you? rattle. Okay. And I looked behind there and of course I'm like literally in the meeting or like uh, leaving <laughs> for a meeting and so I had to go take that meeting and then come back. He's not going anywhere, it's too it's too hot. Yeah. So Yeah, I figured. The other thing is I'm doing I'm actually studying rattlesnakes on this mountain. Can since this is shit, can I put a pit pit tag into them before I do yeah, yeah, before yeah. I go yeah, whatever do my you thing. Do there, okay, you know, cool. <laughs> It's warm out there, so uh, I got that snake pit tagged. We had not seen this snake before. It's a young speckled rattlesnake. You can hear my AC just fighting for its life right now. I'm gonna release it today. I'm gonna do it now. Uh, I got some water, I'm feeling good. And letting it cool down, it's soaking in some water right now. So we're gonna get the temperature down, try to get it as cool as we can and uh, get it back out there. And this is part of the reason I'm gonna release this right now is that um, this is right next to the spot that, well, this, that's our study site that for the last eight years I've been, I know every little hole in the ground on this mountain. I know exactly where to put it. I don't have to go searching for a place. I can just take it to a spot that is a known estimation den for speckled rattlesnakes within its own home range. There's a good number of caves here. This is a hole where speckled rattlesnakes live, so. OK, 
Okay, guy, let's go. Goodbye, little guy. Go hide. Stay cool. And, uh, I gotta get myself to a safe place. So, and uh, the hole that I just released it into is well shaded, but years ago it wasn't just shaded. It was also there's bushes right out front of it. It was protected in a lot of ways, but it is no longer protected. I know we get something cold to drink and get ready for the next one. Hey everyone, headed to Oklahoma now with Tukey. Got ourselves a rattlesnake in a garage. Not sure what kind of rattlesnake or anything like that, uh, but headed there now. So let's go get the snake. Yeah, your garage looks pretty sealed. We'll check yeah, it. Yeah, pretty sealed. And you know what? My husband did say um, that it was open for a couple of minutes this morning. So was I'm it? guessing probably okay. was somewhere Slithered close. Slithered in. Just went in. But yeah, I just opened my door. Oh, your car? No, at the garage oh. door from inside. And it was just right there. much right there. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Did it rattle? It rattled at you? Or? Oh, yeah. It oh, yeah. Under. And actually, I'm really glad it did because I was listening to music and had my AirPods on. Yeah, and you so, thank goodness. It. Yeah, yeah there, no. Yeah. Is it bigger? Mm -hmm. You know what? It wasn't one of our largest ones. Okay. Over here. Yeah, like right um, in front of that cabinet where all the tools are. Uh, here. Yeah. Okay. Where you at, little buddy? I know. I'm like ah. <laughs> those are probably the trickiest. <laughs> Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he's just sticking his head out. What a weirdo. <laughs> we'll grab him. Okay, he's by that blue thing. He's just sticking his oh. head out. Hi, little buddy. What are you doing? I'm just cruising around this garage. Yeah, he's a Sorry. decent sized adult. You want to come see your friend? Mm. <laughs> Stay down, little buddy. Alright, bud. Stop. Get out of here. I know. Nope, don't do it. Nope, nope, don't you ding me. There you go, right there. That's why I wanted to go. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, See you, bud. All right, I've been to that house several times, three or four times actually, uh, throughout the years. They live uh, just right on the corner house, right by a nice wash and on the mountain. Uh, her husband left the garage open for a few minutes this morning, but they were missing a good chunk of weather stripping in the corner of the garage. So the snake could have possibly got in either of those ways. Back on the mountain it is. So I just got another call. And that's busy for being this hot. I think animals are just having a hard time and getting stuck where they don't want to be. All right, let's see what we got. Marissa's telling me about the job. There's something going on here. Rattlesnake by door. Maybe the only good thing about these mid, you know, heat wave kind of calls is that we have a little bit more time. I mean, we want to get there as soon as we can, obviously, but that snake cannot move from its location. It is stuck there by the door until dark. It moved there probably last night and it's been trapped there ever since. And that's the case for all the relocations we do right now. Hi. Oh, there it is, yeah. It's a rattlesnake, yeah.
That's not very big, but it's that would be a hospital trip oh, <laughs> for yeah. sure. It would be, be not good. All right. So it's a thing that uh, I've seen discussed out there, but I don't think that there's been a lot of good answers for this. If the air temperature right now in the shade is lethally hot for a rattlesnake, then why are they out? How can they be out? And that is due, well, if you've ever cooked a, a pancake or an egg, uh, you kind of know the answer. It's a conductive heat transfer. So the foundations of homes, the concrete base all around them, they are being warmed from the air, obviously, but they get a lot of, of temperature uh, energy transfer from the ground that they're in. So by putting the body against the foundation and against concrete that's in those cooler areas, they're not only getting um, energy transfer from the air that's there, they're also being cooled by conductive heat transfer from the foundation and the you know concrete that they're sitting on. So they're able to maintain a survivable temperature even when it's really hot outside by just finding a corner and maximizing contact with the cooler surfaces. And that's what we see a lot of um, on these doorstep relocations. Where thing is very hot. It's not doing very good. I mean, it's too, it's too hot. I gotta get to cool down. I have a little bit of ice in a cup here. The remnants of the uh, Diet Coke that I had in there and rinse it off and I'm gonna go get that snake. I'm gonna give it some of my cold water, this remaining ice, and I'm gonna put that in there and let it sit for a minute. I'm also gonna put it up here with me for a little while. And just let the AC just blast this bucket. It's so dangerous for these animals right now. Uh, I'm just gonna sit here and let it cool down and then try again. Okay, she's acting normal. Breathing is nice and slow. Drank a lot of water. I think uh, I'm gonna give it another couple of minutes here and then we're gonna run over there. I know there's a spot over there I can release her. Okay, we're looking for some access underneath one of these large boulders. And mostly we're looking for a boulder that seems to be mostly under the ground. So this big boulder right here, even though it gets heated by the sun, it's probably just as much cooled by the majority of it being underneath the ground. Okay, snake. This is why uh, I'm often really, well, always, not even often, I'm very critical of, of this practice of relocation, uh, especially when it's done by, by people that might mean well but don't know anything about snakes. So fire departments. I know it's not a good look to say anything that um, could be perceived as, as negative about the fire department, but they're not doing this work. The work of trying to find places to be thermally protected and emulate, you know, the, the places that these animals normally would select on a day that's this hot, especially when the um, conditions are as bad as they are right now. I know that there's lots of people calling the fire department today to relocate snakes, and um, those snakes are probably just dying. Uh, being killed pretty quickly afterwards because they're just releasing like into this grass. That's not enough That's not a survivable situation. I put this snake into my car It was a few degrees away from death even then and just the the act of putting it in the car waiting for the AC to To kick on again um, almost killed it You know, I appreciate that. There's lots of people that want to relocate snakes now but I if you don't know how to find them during the summer, then you don't know where to put them during the summer. And I would ask anybody that does any kind of relocation work, whether you're a firefighter or just a person that wants to do it or anybody, I'm not trying to be a buzzkill, but dampen your uh, excitement about being called out to go get a snake with the requisite knowledge of the animals that you're working with to be able to do it properly. Otherwise, you're not doing anything different than the person swinging a shovel that you're trying to save that snake from. You're just doing it with extra steps. That's not what they need. This is bumming me out when it's this hot, watching animals having this hard of a time.
I'm just gonna get something cold to drink and be ready for the next one.